I have just crashed this M140. Now, before I crashed this M140i, it was a perfectly good, solid running car without any issues. Until not long ago, stupidly, I crashed it. Now, it might not look that bad, but it's what's underneath this bumper, which is actually quite bad. And that's because when I took the front bumper off, it revealed more damage, which I couldn't see until we fully stripped it down. Just like this crash support here, and a bunch of surrounding trims that hold it all together. And on top of that, we had some pretty bad damage to the wheels as well. Tire, wheel, repair wheel, new tire. Repair wheel, tire's fine. Need to repair the wheel and you got a tire on that side. So every corner of the car. <laughs> nice. <laughs> and of course, we have been modifying it along the way because this car was bone stock when I first bought it. But unfortunately, today is not a modification video. It's a fixing video. And I think I've got just what I need to fix it. So I have the parts in the back of the car. So we're going to get this front bumper back off get these parts changed. Oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> it's not I your mean, buggers. I don't think I need those. <laughs> no, I swear the one that fell off was a little bit smaller than that, weren't it? Yeah, I think it was like, I need it to- It was like half the size, it was just like, there. That's the front grill that I hope it's <laughs> that double vented. Yeah, I can't see that being right, but you never know. It might surprise you. Try. Now this one I look a lot better. We do still need to order the grills, these two. We need the splitter back on it because that looks awful without a splitter. And I do have more mods coming as well. So I'll do that in the next video because we have to do a few bits to this car after we've put all this stuff on. So you can wait for that. But let's get this front bumper off and get this stripped. Is it? Yes, again. I hope that goes right. <laughs> I know. I'm, I'm not having much hope with that. Oh, please. Yeah. We know what BMW with parts, man. Yeah. They're just not very good. So. Yeah, that's for one thing, you get a completely different thing for your car. <laughs> we're going manual, we're going old school as well because we're not allowed a ramp today. We are not yeah. in access of a ramp, so we are banished. On our hands and knees again. And I don't have any electric tools. So this may take a while. <laughs> this can take a long time. <laughs> Now you guys have seen me take this bumper off too many times now, so I think you get the gist of it. Two 8 mils into the wing, then a bunch of 8 mils going around the bumper, in the arches and on the bottom, and then you have the 30 torques under the bonnet. And it's as simple as that. Now the first plan of action is to remove this plastic sort of crash beam you can see here. And this bolts onto the lower chassis legs and is held on by this long bolt here. Then we can move on to this side vent here, which is held on by this clip here and one here at the top. And then you have one 8mm in the arch line in just here. <laughs> it's too big. Oh yeah, Mate, you're not I'm probably that. best off using a pair of pliers. I think you are actually, because you're just going to cause more damage then. Oh, oh. That'll work. Nice. You're making the right dog dinner out of this. Nope, no I'm not. Because there it is. See this little bolt in here? See this bad boy? And uh, this one. I reckon I could have had this done in five minutes without a ramp. Yeah. <laughs> and just like that. All because of that little piece. Now moving on to this lower piece, which has a couple of eight mils underneath you need to remove before you can pull it off or persuade it off. And of course, if yours isn't snapped like mine, you'll have to take these long bolts out in order to get it off. Then, for now, we just have this small part of the arch liner which needs to come off, which again has a bunch of 8 mils underneath and then inside the arch liner. All of this, by the way, mm -hmm. is about £250. Oh. 250 quid, that was. Trash. In and around. I don't know the individual prices, but the, what is it? This, that, the grill, that. And when I haven't ordered, well, I've ordered the splitter and everything, that was another whatever. Yeah. More mods. Haven't ordered them. Yeah, it's still gonna be quite expensive. Mm. For something that was small. Yeah. For such a little light impact. Oh my god. Oh, you're butchering that now. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> there we go. Beautiful. I really hope that's not bent, you know. I'm actually quite concerned about that. 
I don't think it is. They do normally have like a little bend in them anyway, don't they? I don't know if that is that like a something that will crease under an accident to protect the front end. Well, I thought so. You're not going to crash this again, are you, Alex? Oh, <laughs> don't you're right about that. Right? Like, this was stolen actually, and somebody crashed it while they were out driving it. Yeah, that's couldn't why, handle the power. Yeah, that's why it was crashed. But I just found the car damaged. Not really. Yeah. Is that what's that going? That one doesn't it? It's got. Brad, yeah, he's got the vent there. Yeah, that's, Brad is doing literally nothing. Look at the state of that, Brad. There is no air going through that. Nah, that's done. That is finished. That is a new one, really. Yeah, wonder how much one of those is. <laughs> we'll never know because I'm never going to ask that question. But they're going to be about 500 quid or something. Pretty sure it's going to in. Oh, nice little bump there. Yeah, well, it. Yeah. It's gotta be. I don't know. I don't know. What's it like? Like those on top. Uh, it's the way we'll find out if that's bent or not. That actually goes a fair bit or not. Without breaking it. Nope. Beautiful. It fits nicely. I don't want it now. Gorgeous. It's all coming together. Why does? Yeah. Huh? Why aren't you going in? Oh, right. <laughs> I thought I'd go in there. I thought I'd know it is bed. <laughs> right. That's it. Beautiful. Solid as it. It's a good job you're still young. What, even though my back's about 90 years old? Yeah. You got that one up, nice. I'm not even going to attempt that one. That's one of Do the it. paper ones. Do it. <laughs> Good start. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't work. <laughs> oh. Mm. No. no. Them paper ones, <laughs> they don't work. It's the bane of your life. Stupid idea. <laughs> oh, that's a rock I've just nabbed some. Oh. Oh. That hurts. Proper old, ain't we? Yeah. God. Old man noises coming out of us today. Wouldn't have that if we had a ramp. Shut up! <laughs> I'm gonna be so mad if I get ill. Yeah. I just know I'm gonna walk in there. About an hour's time, I'm gonna start sneezing. I'm gonna have a cold. Sounds like a perfect way to spend your weekend. <laughs> This way is going to be completely wrong. No, you're talking about. No, nah, you're a professional. Look, like these four are for the bumper. Yeah. Then you've got to bolt them into the. Yes! Yes! You've got this. You know, and it just clicks in your mind, dude. <laughs> if anyone wants to buy Alex a ramp for Christmas, that'd be mostly appreciated. At this point, all I care about is like, a mat. Yeah. I, could have, I should have just put some clothes on. You should have done it. I did tell you that before we started. But did you listen? No! no. <laughs> oh, it's the first wheel again. Start up the engine yet again. 358. Now we're working with what we've got here. So we're actually stripping this bumper on the grass because we don't have any stand. But we do need to change this center grill. So the first thing we need to do is take out these two side pieces on the side. They're just literally held in by one push clip and they slot in. They should just pull out just like that. Then we can take out this small little vented piece from the grill and then we can start taking the main grill out. But this grill is broken so I just persuaded it out. Now we have the old grill off and all the excess pieces that were left. All we need to do now is get the new grill and just tap it in line with all the tabs and it should just fall straight into its location. Then we can go ahead and pop our two little side pieces in. Again, they just slot down and then you just push the little push clip through. And the last thing before we put the bumper on is these two little side pieces that go on the grill. You should just be able to line them up and push them a little bit harder than usual and they should just slot straight into their place. Now, although this car is extremely dirty, it probably wasn't the best idea to get it any dirtier. Just like that. 
It seems like you've been on that for about a good solid 10 minutes now, trying to pull that one screw. Because it's not about power tools. <laughs> I'm having to do things manually and it's just taking forever. Plus, these are very difficult to get to, brother. Okay. Yeah. You could have said I've got a jacket at home. Yeah. Yeah. And I've got power tools at home as well. What? <laughs> That's too much work like this. <laughs> too much work for a Saturday morning. <laughs> Back to his former glory. I mean, you still need to check the suspension out on it. Shut up! This could be the last video you mentioned it about 10 times. Yeah, because he needs to check it. I need to pay. still it. never got around to do it. I need it. to do an alignment. It's so snobby, but it is so much effort. <laughs> and my forearms have just got no strip, and I'm like turning the bolt like this. <laughs> No, you got like shoulder pains of a 90 year old. Yeah. 70 year old. Right, so there you have the front end done. Back on, new grill. All these pieces down here are all in, under trays on. So now we need to head down the road to Rickfit because we need to get this car running correctly. Now, when I say running correctly, I mean driving correctly because at the minute this car is driving like trash. And I think it's because it has now done 76,000 miles and it's never ever had gearbox service. And I think that is literally taking two to three working days to change gear. So it needs to go on a ramp and get it done properly. So that is where we're heading. So I'll catch you at Rickfit. It's kind of hard to get it on camera, but like it just feels a little bit sluggish. Like changing gears, it just doesn't really feel as snappy as it used to be. But fortunately, I think this is gonna fix it. So it should drive pretty well after this. So I've been to Autodoc, spent 200 pounds on a big box with a big pan and a load of oil. So we're gonna get this in the shop now, get it on a ramp and throw this on. Now here is the pan that you're going to be changing. This is what comes in the kit and it will also come with a bunch of oil, specifically seven liters. Now we thought this is where you was to drain it from or even top it up from. However, there is a drain plug on the bottom as you can see here. And we was actually wrong. That is not where you fill it up from. You actually fill it up from the side at a different plug here. So full ZF kit, which is ZF make the gearbox and then you've got and an absolute ton of oil, seven litres that is. ZF Logma Fluid 8. Yeah, ZF Fluid, this is a ZF 8 speed gear, uh, seven speed, something like ZF gearbox anyway. Right, so hurdle one we failed at because this is spinning. Look at that, lovely. We failed at the first hurdle, but <laughs> we're gonna work through it and we're gonna get this done because this needs to be done. And we are committed now and I don't wanna fail. So we're gonna carry on. I'm saying that Phil, oh no, look at the color. Black, isn't it? Oh, it's black. It's not gold, look at it. It's not gold. Oh, liquid amber. That is awful, that is. Oh, Look at that. Clean Jesus that Christ. That's awful. God, no wonder it's driving like crud. Look at the colour of that. <sighs> to try and catch that when it comes off, because that is going to leak oh, oil everywhere. <laughs> No, you go down with the big Oh. Oh, I think I dropped all that. Yeah. Just gotta let that dry now. Oh, we got a bit on the floor. I'll be the cleaner while you do the, the man stuff. Right now, what we're thinking is let this drain for as long as possible into this disgusting pan. Then once that's drained, we're going to let it drip for a little bit, get all the dirty oil out and then 
new pan on it, it already has a seal, it does come with the seal. This is it. So it has like a little rubber seal around the edge, which is fine. Then I'm assuming this little piece here goes straight up into that thing where it's that. I don't know, I think so. So once that's drained for a little bit, we're gonna put this on, hopefully it goes on straight. <laughs> yeah. And if you honestly you could probably what? Four newton meters plus 45 degrees. Yeah, but then you could, you could honestly just... <laughs> you don't need, four newton meters is nothing. There that's you go, that's four newton meters. <laughs> that's literally nothing. Well, as long as it doesn't turn I'm under a little bit of pressure. There you go, there's your four newton meters. Well, I reckon you do four newton meters by hand. Yeah. Without a ratchet to your fingers. It's finger tight. Yeah, they do say 10 newton meters as well. If you're not doing four newton meters plus 45, yeah. just do 10. Yeah. That's easily measurable. So I'll get the torque pattern up now, I'll put it on the screen. That is the way you're supposed to do it. I think you start here and then you kind of just work opposite and then it goes in like a mad diag. So I'll put that on the screen for anyone that is wondering what it is. Right, pan on. So now we need to do pump it in from there. That's a completely different colour to what came out of mine. Yeah. So it ain't supposed to be golden then, is it? No, it's supposed it's to be green. green. Now we only actually had this little pump to get seven litres of oil into it. So it did take quite a while, but it did the trick in the end. So it's leaking after three. Yeah. How many did I Well, they, I don't, they say that it needs seven, but there's still going to be a litre in the gearbox. Yeah. And there's so six, and then whatever falls out. So no, I, no, I reckon, no, start no, it no, up, yeah. put the sump plug back on, start it up, get it warm. Yeah. I'll bang it in gear a few times. We'll let it sit, let it push on the system. Yeah. And then we'll come back and top it back up. Hopefully three more go in. So, as I said, we're going to run this car up to temp. It doesn't need to be fully up to temp, it just needs to be relatively hot. Once that's happened, you can start pushing the gearbox fluid around the torque converter and putting it into reverse, drive, neutral. Just go through all of your gears so it pushes all that fluid around the system properly and efficiently. Once that's done, you can then go back down to the bottom of the car and check that fluid isn't still leaking out and top it up if it needs it. Oh, there's, there's one stage that we've passed. Yeah. That's one well, stage yeah, you've yeah. passed now and it's just yeah, it's try and get some fluid in there. So we topped it back up and then we took the car off the ramp, drove around the block a little bit to make sure everything was pumped through the system fully. We then got it back on the ramp to check the fluid one last time. I do still want to get some more oil in, so we're going to get it one last time in the air and then we're going to put a bit of oil in, then we should be good to go. So let's get this car back in the air. So we're actually maxed out on all the oil now. So it actually only took about four liters because I, th I think we didn't warm it up all the way and there's still quite a bit left in the torque converter. So I'll give it about a week and I'll get it back up on a ramp and I'll just double check it to make sure it doesn't need topping up. But I think that is gonna be the lot. And now I do have another three liters over there. So if I ever need to top it back up or I need to do another one, I don't need to buy a ton of oil. That's also a benefit. What we've got to do now, under tray back on. Yeah. Run the tray on, send it. Hopefully nothing leaks. I think we'll be all right. I'll say this is a lot better. So I would definitely recommend going and doing a gearbox service, especially if you have around 60 to 70,000 miles and it hasn't been done. It definitely, definitely helps. And just like that, we are back and the gearbox service is done and the front is looking better than ever. The only thing is now, we need to take that reg off and we need a splitter and we do need these two, but that is for the next episode. So I hope you guys did enjoy this video. Stay tuned for more videos like this and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.